Creative games are a specific niche, and they are often overlooked. They also come in lots of various forms. Creativity could be a creative art style and a way of gameplay progression, while some are much more in the literal sense creative. They are built to service the player and allow them to actually create something using their own minds and imagination to their heart's content. Today I wanted to explore a wide variety of different creative games, some legitimately just released and some are a lot older than that. Now of course there are countless creative games, but everything today I've never played before, and more importantly, I did add a nice little tailor to this list, which all the games here are available for free using the Xbox Game Pass, which is hopefully a huge plus to you guys. Onto the first game that I dove into, Cooking Simulator. Listen, I had no idea what to expect when I went into Cooking Simulator, but this game was brutal. I decided to play in the creative mode where you don't have to really worry about objectives, money, etc. And I just wanted to really dive into the creative aspect of the game itself. And holy moly, dude, it's brutal. There are a lot of options, things you can make and do, etc. And you're basically free to cook whatever you can think of. All right, literally whatever you can think of. And I was live streaming this. So let me explain. My chat told me, take it easy. Start by making a sandwich because the controls are a little bit finicky. And I said, okay, let's do it. It should be fine. It went horribly wrong. Let's start with- Oh, it's a thick ass slice. It's fine. It's fine. All right. Well, we don't really need this or this. Okay. We'll just need these two pieces. We'll make one sandwich to start. Okay. Let's start with- Let's start with one sandwich. I wish my kitchen looked like that. Okay. No. <laughs> Should we put the whole thing? Oh my God. You have to aim it. Oh. Wait. How do I stop? How do I stop? Honestly, that's okay. It's not that much oil. It's fine. That is probably not the best way. Oh! Yeah. So you just gotta move it around. Oh my god, wait, it's perfect. The controls, like I said, are unwieldy. And with practice, it does get better. But as a first timer, it was hard to get anything right. It does make me wonder if this is best played with a VR headset or and controls, but I'm not entirely sure. As you can see, after <laughs> terribly failing my sandwich task, I decided to try something a little bit different. Steak, french fries, and a pasta salad. And my journey was questionable. There we go, let's restart. This was the mistake, this is a mistake. Now we're gonna make a perfect steak, watch. I feel like I can't, can't even cook a gas tank. Okay. Now I'll cook the steak and I have to cook the steak before this kills me. Dude, I will put Gordon Ramsay to shame with this watch. <laughs> what in the fucking knife is this? I think that's the game engine. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that works. Okay, well, it's supposed to be on the side of the pan, not like underneath the steak, but we can just like shake the pan around now. Yeah, that's fine. Forgot about this. Well, that's not cooked. <laughs> Wait, I'm actually upset that this is not cooking evenly. Okay, let's not mess that up. Wait, why did it not fill up? What are these buttons for? Oh, oh hell no. There is no way. How am I supposed to turn these and make them into fries after? Cooking IRL is much easier than this. Oh my god, this is hard. There we go. In the end, my masterpiece was something I actually felt proud of, no matter how weird that sounds. It is quite a satisfying simulator, and if you are super into food, cooking, I could see with some practice a lot of people truly enjoying this game. It's not my cup of tea, but I can't call it a bad game because that would be unfair to the title. The second game I tried, however, was Super Liminal. This game, unlike the previous creative game, isn't creative in the literal sense, but instead in its design and gameplay, having to be creative for yourself to progress through it. Apparently, this was a huge hit that I just never heard of, sadly, making me a minority, I suppose. This game plays with perspective, and all the puzzles you complete are with the mindset of perspective is reality. Moving things closer makes the physical object smaller, and moving it away from you makes the physical object larger. Then it's up to you to think outside the box and to make your way through the game. There are a lot of whoa moments that left me quite amazed. I am personally not that great at puzzle games, but this game never felt too difficult to a point where it was frustrating. It keeps itself well paced and very innovative. The voice acting and obscure storyline you progress through does remain consistent and interesting as well. Oh, thank God Sunday's beans, bro. I fucking love beans on Sunday. That make That's good. That's good. I'm glad there's at least beans on Sunday. I don't want to linger on this game too much just because of how well known it is, but it is a game that I truly did take pleasure in playing and I can recommend it to anyone to try. Just so many cool little moments like wakey wakey, I missed something. 
Oh, I can I grab the moon? Wait, I can! Is that a bomb? Oh no, it's a bunch of stuff on the moon. Wait, it just floats. Wait, it makes sense. It's the moon. Millions <laughs> today, we steal the moon. Remembering that I can pick up the sign from above and then change its shape to have me ramp up and parkour into the next area. Moving on from there, a more recent title called Cocoon is what we dived into next. I thought it would be a little more niche when I was checking it out, but Video Game Donkey made his own video about it, and it's probably not really as well hidden as I first thought. This game's creativity comes from its world design and art style as well as its concept, so again, changing the style of creative game once more. Cocoon is a straightforward game in the way you play and control the character, but offers extensive charm in the way you interact interact with the world itself. Puzzles are creative but subtle, without being extensively hard, which to me is a massive plus. What took me off guard though and really made me want to put this game on the list was the very first boss battle. It's so simplistic in terms of how you play it, dodge, pick up a bomb, and then hit the boss with it, and then the second phase is a simple dodge-based game. But that's not what makes it creative. It's important for me to iterate what made it creative in my eyes it was the execution within its art style more than the mechanics I encountered. For example, for example, when I died in this boss battle, I didn't just splat and respawn, the boss catches you and throws you back at the spawn point with a nice little warp animation, no loading screen or nothing. It's all animated with such intense visual colors and contrast that it makes it a pleasure to explore. Outside of the boss battle though, the game is a tad bit slow paced for my liking. But if you want to relax while remaining visually engaged, this is where the game kind of shines. Unlike all the other games here where the creativity might come out by you actually creating something or having to solve a little bit harsher puzzles, these do somewhat exist in Cocoon, especially the puzzles are very creative, but it's more of a normal game standard, so the pacing remains healthy without being over the top. You know, it doesn't require maximum brain power is what I'm getting at, but it still is a pleasure to play. The fourth game is Besieged, and it's a game I played back in 2015, according to Steam. Now, I do remember it vividly to some perspective, but I am diving back in eight years later, so it's the only game that I snuck in that I have technically played before. And immediately, it was apparent to me that this game aged well. The linear story is just a bunch of sandbox objectives, and the way you complete the objective is completely in your own creative control. Now, the experience can be brutal because you're punished for building poorly. The Think about it this way, the objective is to build a vehicle that completes the objective. However, physics and engineering does exist to some degree within this game, and failing the basics of those two will, um, lead you to failure. What if I flew over the wall? Hold up. <laughs> Yo, this thing can probably take them on, honestly, I'm not gonna lie. This thing can probably take them on. <laughs> However, I would be doing this game a massive injustice only showing you these early stages. Something I need to push is showcasing these fantastic builds that you're witnessing on screen right now. The community has made some insane mechanics, things with complexity and sophistication. If you want to build machines that are capable of doing a multitude of things, then I highly recommend that you check out Besieged. Now the final game on this list literally just came out on October 24th. It is Cities Skylines 2. And believe it or not, I've never played a Skyline game or any other city builder for that matter. So I'm diving into this completely blind. The objective is simple, build and plan your own city. But the way you go about doing that objective is beyond simple. You can choose sandbox mode or play the game as intended by building a city where the revenue produces actually matters. And let me just say, whoa, I had no idea what I was expecting originally, but this game is complex. Lots of people know about Skylines 1, but I didn't. So I didn't know that everything you could imagine is pretty much included. Every road, like intersections, roundabouts, highways, every residential style from skyscrapers to suburban homes to European style medium density homes. That's not even what makes the game intricate. It's just not, it's not the models that you put down, but it's the way you have to check the wind direction to make sure that wherever I plan my industrial buildings, the wind doesn't drag the polluted air into the residential areas and make my citizens unhappy. You need to make power grids that properly connect and power 
power your city. Plumbing, sewage, drainage, education, police, mail, transit, trade, and transportation. It literally doesn't end. I can even hike the taxes of my own citizens and change the zoning so that only certain buildings and purposes are used based off of my land. Now you'll quickly notice that in the background, I'm only using some of my footage because in the end, I only started with creative mode just because I have a overwhelming it was I wanted to play around with stuff and again similar to besieged I'd be doing this game an injustice this is quite literally the only way to even add this game onto the list personally I'm hooked and addicted I think I'll end up spending countless hours in this game but it takes time to really show it off especially because I want to play it properly using the revenue system but seriously I talk about city planning and urbanism consistently with close friends and it's kind of a, a pseudo passion of mine like a small little passion of mine so it kind of just clicked it's kind of insane that I never knew about this game and it's letting me live out my ideas plans and thoughts now even just sandbox is such a fun way to mess around with wacky stupid ideas that aren't realistic like trying to make a perfectly circle road with towers in the center and whatnot it can be a little bit of chaotic fun at times now personally i haven't had a hit of creativity like this since i've played minecraft or even sons of the forest it's something to do with building right now besiege is also to do with building but maybe because i like cities and that stuff more than i like building vehicles so that's probably what clicked with me and the game itself really does nail its own gameplay loop to make something that would otherwise feel overwhelming quite consumable to countless players which is why it's very popular however the game did just come out and the performance is abysmal i have a ryzen 3900x and an rtx 3080 and i'm seeing very low frame rates and that's while my uh city or whatever we call this which is just barren land with a struggled drawn circle road quite empty you know what i mean i started stacking things and the performance just gets worse and worse it's a little bit unfortunate because i think the game has a lot of potential otherwise and i am enjoying it but the only reason i am is because i got it for free via game pass but i wouldn't recommend dropping your hard-earned money on it quite yet until they iron out all the performance issues also i don't know if, how true this is you can't take my word for it but apparently people have told me that it lacks details from the first game like pedestrians used to do more and a lot of other minor details were more visible in the first game when you zoomed into your own city like the way they would deal with fires apparently they would actually come and there'd be a whole process to dealing with fires where now it's a little bit dumbed down however something else i've heard is that the developers supported city skylines one for a very long time so i'm gonna be hopeful that patches will come out quickly to address performance issues as well as hopefully some of the other missing features anyway that's all we're exploring for today and again, every single game here is free on Game Pass. So check them out and let me know if anything has interested you. Also, please let me know your favorite creative game in the comments down below because I think it'd be really fun to check some more of these types of games out.